Seto Kaiba versus Ashizu Ishtar. With the rise of the Ashizu cards in the real world, I thought it'd be a good idea to take a look at where it all started. In this duel, Ashizu can see into the future, thanks to her Millennium Necklace. On top of that, her deck is based all around destroying the opponent's deck, leaving them with very little options left in the duel. Before the duel even begins, Ashizu reveals she has seen every play of this duel, knows exactly how it's going to play out, and in the end, Obelisk the Tormentor will betray Kaiba and lead to his doom. Spoilers, Kaiba will defy fate in the end, we'll get to that when we get to it, but for the time being, I want to find out if there are any other opportunities for victory in this duel. Perhaps there were some misplays which could have changed the outcome of the duel as well. Let's find this out together as we jump into the duel. The duel begins and Kaiba goes first. He draws and his opening hand consists of Vorse Raider, Kaiser Glider, Blue Eyes White Dragon, Soul Exchange, Polymerization, and Crush Card Virus. Before Kaiba does anything, Ashizu does some next level backseat gaming. Basically, by doing this, she confirms that the future she saw is right on track. It's Ashizu's turn and she draws. Without even looking at her opening hand, she knows it consists of Keldo, Mudora, Zolga, Revival Magic, Fellow Traveler to the Grave, and Monster Reborn. Ishizu flexes her Millennium item by summoning her Keldo into defense with her eyes closed. She then activates her Fellow Traveler to the Grave spell. Due to its effect, both players reveal their hands. Then, each chooses two cards from the other player's hand to send to the grave. Then after that, both players draw two new cards. Ishizu, not needing to look at Kaiba's hand, asks him to send Polymerization and Kaiser Glider. He does this and then makes Ishizu send her Revival Magic and Monster Reborn spells to the grave. Both players then draw two new cards. Kaiba gets Virus Cannon and the Flute of Summoning Dragon, while Ishizu gets Sword of Dogra, and swords of revealing light. With this, Ashizu ends her turn. And this is where I have to jump in and say, Ashizu, if you would have done one or two different things in this turn, you could have won on your next turn. But how, you ask? Well, all you had to do was set Monstry Born first and then summon Zolga into attack before using your spell. Now, when you activate it, you instead send Kaiba's Blue Eyes White Dragon in his hand, as well as his Soul Exchange spell. You then use Monster Reborn to bring back Blue Eyes to your side of the field. Blue Eyes attacks Vorse Raider, dealing 1100 damage. Zolga attacks directly, dealing another 1700 damage. We move to Kaiba's turn. He draws Shrink. But, oh no. He has no summonable monsters, no spells and traps to keep him in the duel. All he can do is set Shrink and end his turn. And with that, she can attack directly for game with Kaiba's own Blue Eyes White Dragon. Now to answer why Ashizu didn't do this, well, it's quite simple. It's not a part of her predestined path that leads her to victory. Keep in mind, she is in the future. She knows the exact moves she needs to make in order to win. So straying from that path becomes unknown territory. So why would she do that? But it brings up a very interesting point. How exactly does the Millennium Necklace work? Does Ashizu have any say in how the future transpires? What I mean by this is, regardless of if she had the Millennium Necklace, is this how the duel would have played out? Or is it because she has the Millennium Necklace and can see the future, she's able to manipulate events in order to become the future that she so desires? I always assumed it was the latter. She manipulated things to become her desired outcome. However, from everything I've seen online, it's actually the former. It seems that the Millennium Necklace simply shows an already determined future, unable to be changed in any way, unless specifically a Millennium item intervenes. So with this in mind, that means that the Millennium Necklace grants no in-duel advantages. The best you get 
is you're never surprised by a play because you know it's going to happen. She is not manipulating the duel into a future she wants. She is simply following her predestined path and is unable to stray from it in any way. Honestly, stuff like this I love. It's really interesting to think about, but I'd love to know your guys' opinions in the comment section below. My opinion is not set in stone, but it seems to be the most likely case. But I'll let you all be the judge. But the point I'm trying to make of all this is Shizu, you made a huge misplay. I know you're following your predestined path, but still, you could have won. Misplay. It's Kaiba's turn, and he draws Shrink. Kaiba moves straight into his battle phase and uses Force Raider to destroy Keldo. Following this, Kaiba moves into his main phase 2 and sets his Shrink spell face down. Kaiba ends his turn. Now, believe it or not, Kaiba actually has a play that could lead to his victory. All he had to do was this simple thing. You see, Kaiba has Soul Exchange in his hand. He could have used it here to tribute a Shizu's monster and his own to get out Blue Eyes White Dragon. He could then attack directly dealing 3,000 damage. Doing this would most likely have led to his victory, as he would not be playing into a Shizu's trap. So why didn't Kaiba do this? Well, I think there's three reasons why. One, Kaiba has a plan. Kaiba needs his Vorse Raider on the field in order to activate his Crush Card Virus, in order to destroy a Shizu's entire deck. It's a common trait for Kaiba to do this, to make a plan going into a duel and to stick to that plan a bit too rigidly. So I think it's in character with Kaiba not wanting to stray from his Crush Card Virus trap card play. Plus, on paper, getting rid of nearly every single one of your opponent's strongest monsters, it's a good thing to do. The second reason is just speculation, but with Soul Exchange in hand, I imagine Kaiba wants the perfect victory. And let's be honest, what's a better perfect victory than beating a Shizu with the very god card that she gave him and that she wants to take back from him and she's sort of hinting that's going to cost him the duel. And this also slides nicely into my final point. Kaiba has God Card Tunnel Vision. You might not have noticed it yet, but the Blue Eyes White Dragon in Kaiba's hand, he hasn't even acknowledged it. Throughout this entire duel, he will never look at this card. He will never make a reference to this card. And he basically will just deny its existence until the last turn of this duel. And the reason that is, God Card Tunnel Vision. He wants his God Card out. All he's focused on right now is getting that monster out. So that's why I don't think he did that play. However, good news at the end of the duel is going to learn the importance of his ace monster. So it's fine. It's Ashizu's turn and she draws Exchange of the Spirit. Ashizu summons her Medora to the field into attack and then activates her equip spell Sword of Dogra. She equips it to Medora. Due to its effect, Medora gains 500 attack. Now, with enough attack to destroy Vorse Raider, Ashizu attacks. However, Kaiba reveals his combo. He activates Shrink to halve Vorse Raider's attack to 950. Now, since there is a dark monster with less than 1000 attack on the field, Kaiba can play his Crush Card Virus, infecting his Vorse Raider. Medora's attack continues. Vorse Raider is destroyed. Kaiba takes the first damage of the duel. However, Due to Crush Card Virus's effect, every monster on Ishizu's field, in her hand, and in her deck, with more than 1500 attack, is sent to the graveyard. Ishizu sends her Medora on the field and Zolga in her hand to the grave, along with a huge chunk of her deck. Completely unsurprised by this, by the way, Ashizu moves into her main phase 2 and activates Swords of Revealing Light. Now, Kaiba can't attack for 3 whole turns. Ashizu sets her exchange of spirit face down and ends her turn. As she does this, she reveals that when Swords of Revealing Light's effect ends, Kaiba will draw the very card that will lead to his downfall. It's Kaiba's turn, and he draws Dark Gremlin. He summons it to the field and sets his virus cannon spell face down and ends his turn. Are you ready for some speed round turns? Good. Ready? Three, Three two, one. Go. It's Ashizu's turn and she draws Muko. She ends her turn. It's Kaiba's turn. He draws Ring of Destruction. He ends his turn. It's Ashizu's turn. She draws a second copy of Muko. She ends her turn. It's Kaiba's turn. He draws Silent Doom. He ends his turn. It's Ashizu's turn and she draws Bomb Held by a Tribute. She ends her turn. As she does, Swords Revealing Light's effect comes to an end. Stall cards. Am I right, guys? It's Kaiba's turn and he draws the card Ashizu said would lead to his defeat. Obelisk the Tormentor. He moves into his battle phase and uses Dark Gremlin to attack Ashizu directly. He then moves into his main phase 2 and activates his set Virus Cannon spell. 
Due to its effect, it forces Ashizu to send 10 spell cards from her deck to the graveyard. Ashizu does this, and we see a pretty cool interior graveyard point of view shot. Which, I'll be honest, I don't think you'll ever see again in the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime. It was a nice shot, I liked it, you don't see that very often. Anyway, this is where Ashizu flips the script. She activates her set trap, Exchange of the Spirits. Now, by paying 1,000 life points, each player swaps their deck with the graveyard. This act ruins Kaiba's day, as now he only has six cards to call his deck. These cards are Vorse Raider, Crush Card Virus, Shrink, Virus Cannon, Polymerization, and Kaiser Glider. Looking over on the other side of the field, Ashizu is actually loving life right now, as she gets to add back all the cards Kaiba forced her to send to the grave. Kaiba begrudgingly ends his turn. It's Ashizu's turn, and she draws Kelbeck. She summons it to the field and then sets one of her Muko traps face down. Ashizu ends her turn. It's Kaiba's turn and he draws. <laughs> yeah, virus cannon. Uh, thank you, Ashizu. He attempts to activate it. However, Ashizu activates her Muko trap, which has the effect to either negate the activation of a card or force a card drawn to be sent to the grave. As such, Virus Cannon is negated. Ashizu, flexing again, reveals the next card Kaiba will draw will be Crush Card Virus. However, she says she won't even let him have a chance to play that one this time. And so, Kaiba ends his turn. Now, observant viewers might have noticed that Kaiba's monster is strong enough to defeat Ashizu's monster. Why didn't he attack? Well, Kaiba is running out of monsters. With not enough monsters in his hand and deck to summon Obelisk the Tormentor, which is, keep in mind, his only chance of winning the duel, he's gonna have to rely on Soul Exchange. And to use it, he needs Ashizu to get out a couple more monsters. So, in order to achieve that, he's letting her build up her field. A desperate gamble, for sure. However, it's the only option he has. Until he remembers he's got a blue eyes white dragon in his hand that only needs two tributes, but um, okay. It's Ashizu's turn, and she draws Zolga. She summons it to the field. At this moment, right here, Kaiba finally accepts Ashizu can actually see the future, and he truly believes he is fated to lose. However, after a pep talk from Yugi saying how he actually sees a future where the two of them duel in Battle City, well, this stirs Kaiba on and gets him re-energized for the duel. Ashizu jumps in, reminding Kaiba, Bro, this is still my turn, by the way. She uses Zolga to attack and destroy Dark Gremlin. She follows this up by then attacking directly with Kelbeck. She moves into her main phase two and sets a second copy of her Muko trap face down and ends her turn. It's Kaiba's turn and he draws Crush Card Virus. However, Ashizu, a lady of her word, promises to force that card out of his hand and activates Muko to send it straight to the grave. Unable to summon any monsters in his hand, Kaiba sets his soul exchange spell face down. Now, due to Battle City rules, a set normal spell can be activated like a quick play spell card on the following turn. The plan? Pray! Ashizu overextends and summons a third monster. If she does that, Kaiba can chain soul exchange to tribute all three of her monsters to summon Obelisk the Tormentor. With this last gamble, he ends his turn. But I mean, it didn't have to be a gamble. Why the risk? Activate Silent Doom. You have a third monster on the field right now. Wait a minute. One, two, three. My goodness. I'll play Soul Exchange right now. Tribute all the monsters. Summon Obelisk the Tormentor. I don't care about back row. Gods aren't usually affected by most spells and traps. Attack directly for game. You know what? Like, there's no downside to it. I don't know why Kaiba didn't do it. And the ridiculous thing is, for some reason, Ishizu hasn't set Bomb with a tribute face down yet. She should have set that as soon as she had it, really. Because then if Kaiba ever did tribute the opponent's monsters, she would win. So the fact that she didn't do this meant that Kaiba could win this turn if he wanted to. But had she set it prior, then Kaiba would have lost even earlier. So... Obviously, they're sticking to their predestined paths, Kaiba. I don't know why I didn't do this play, so... 
misplay Kaiba. In fact, the same situation will happen later in the anime when Kaiba is dueling Yugi. Two monsters on Yugi's field, one on his. Kaiba plays Soul Exchange, tries to summon out Obelisk, but obviously that gets interrupted. So it's confirmed that he could have won this way. No idea why he didn't do it. It's a Shizu's turn and the penultimate turn of the duel. She draws and gets a mysterious card that will never be seen or used. What do you think it was in the comments section below? Let me know. Ishizu finally sets her bomb held by a tribute trap face down. Due to its effect, a bomb is placed inside one of the monsters. She chooses it to be Zolga. Now, if Zolga is used for a tribute summon, the bomb will be transferred into that new monster, unbeknownst to the opponent. Then, the very moment that monster declares an attack, it will self-destruct, regardless of it being an Egyptian god or not. After this happens, damage is dealt to the wielder equal to its attack. This is the victory Ishizu saw in her future. All she needs to do is summon a monster to set it all in motion. Before she does that, however, I'm sure some of you are screaming at the screen, Ashizu, just don't overextend. You've got game on the field. Both your monsters can attack directly and just win the duel. The problem with this is Kaiba would probably, in this dire situation where he's about to lose, he'll just use Soul Exchange anyway, as the, the quick play spell it is now, and just tribute the two monsters on the field instead to get out Blue Eyes White Dragon. Yes, it's the exact same outcome, but now Blue Eyes White Dragon is infected with the bomb. So if Blue Eyes attacks directly, Kaiba still loses. So it's kind of a win-win situation for Ashizu. However, it's actually a little bit more than that. If she would have done this play instead, she could have summoned her new monster into defense, ended her turn. Kaiba would now be in such a pickle. Even if he had a vision saying, listen, Kaiba, your blue eyes, it's infected with a bomb. If it attacks, you will lose. What is he going to do? He can't get out Obelisk now. The only chance Kaiba had was if he draws Vorse Raider as early as possible. Normal summon Vorse Raider, then use Silent Dune to get a third monster on the field. Tribute all three, summon out Obelisk. The problem with that is, it's going to take several turns. And in those several turns, the Shizu is going to have a couple monsters on the field into defense. So, not only does he have to get out Obelisk, he then needs to get over all of the Shizu's monsters. And most likely, before he ever gets a direct attack off, he'll have lost due to deck out. So yeah, Shizu, your vision really did make you overextend. If you didn't overextend and just went for game as soon as you had it, you could have won. Getting back to reality, Ashizu does summon her Agido. Kaiba then activates his soul exchange. He tributes all three of her monsters. Now the bomb is armed inside Obelisk. Ashizu ends her turn. It's Kaiba's turn and the final turn of the duel. He draws and gets polymerization. Kaiba, believing he has won this game, attempts to move into his battle phase in order to declare his direct attack. However, before he does, Marek's Millennium Rod senses its previous owner from a past life in a dire situation. Due to its last shred of loyalty it had, a presetto, it bestows upon him a vision of the past in order to protect him in the duel. It shows Kaiba holding a mysterious girl in front of a tablet depicting the blue eyes white dragon. When Kaiba returns, he feels an overwhelming sense that blue eyes is the key to victory. And this is where he finally acknowledges the blue eyes white dragon in his hand. Kaiba changes fate. He activates Silent Doom, bringing back Gadget Soldier into defense. He then tributes both it and his Egyptian god in order to summon his Blue Eyes White Dragon. With the bomb defused and no longer on the field, Kaiba is free to attack without consequence. And so, Blue Eyes White Dragon attacks Ashizu directly. Her life points drop to zero, and Kaiba wins the duel. Yes, the Deus Ex Machina Millennium Rod did save Kaiba. But I'm gonna defend him here. There's so many characters with magical, mystical abilities. Kaiba has none of this. He deserves a bit of a break every now and then. Let him have a magical, mystical moment. Just give him that. Kaiba, you deserve that one. It's fine. In terms of the possible wins and misplays throughout the duel, I feel like I've covered them all pretty thoroughly throughout. Ashizu had a few opportunities to win. So did Kaiba. However, she was following her predetesting path. So no matter how many superior plays we saw throughout the duel, I don't think she was ever going to change the script. However, though, it is revealed she's happy she lost. She even lets out a little bit of a smile. This is because 
thanks to Kaiba, she can confirm that fate is not set in stone, meaning her brother Marek's fate might still be salvageable, thanks to the interference of the Millennium Items. That was Ashizu versus Kaiba. If you would like to learn more about the Ashizu cards, I'll leave a video on screen right now and down in the comments pinned. So if you want to watch them, go ahead and click it. Thanks for watching. Catch you later.